Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, I just wanted to talk about Titania on Steel Path for a little bit. Um, I've been really happy with Titania so far. Um, at first when Steel Path came out, uh, I wasn't super happy with uh, Titania just for normal missions. Um, so Titania is already pretty well known for being very good at extremely niche use cases such as being very fast for capture missions. Um, she's probably the best frame to use against uh, the specific boss, Lephantis, which is a little less relevant because it looks like Plague Star won't be coming back. She's also seen some use uh, in Eidolons, um, but overall she just has a very like very niche frame. Not necessarily bad, but niche. Uh, she's gotten a ton of quality of life improvements this year, massive improvements to her tribute, um, a lot of improvements to with how um, Razor Wing interacts with your operator mode. Um, so I really wanted to bring Steel, bring Titania into Steel Path. I really like Titania, um, but at first I was a little frustrated because she was you know very single target focused. I just didn't really feel like it clicked. Um, so when the Hellman system came out a couple months later, I decided to give her another shot. Had a little more success, um, kind of put her down again, and then really wanted to really wanted to make it work. So I kind of talked to some people in my clan. Some people had some suggestions, and one mod in particular from Deimos was really strong on her. And so now I'm pretty happy with her performance. Um, I'd say a really big addition that I made to her, which you can kind of see here, is um, using punch through on Dexpixia. That makes her ability to clear groups of enemies significantly better. Um, so in short, I switched from a crit focus build to a pure status focus build on Dexpixia, which allowed me to uh, have a little more mod space. So I was able to slot in a punch through mod and I, that worked out really, really well. So credit to somebody in my clan who suggested that to me. Um, you know, definitely thankful for that. Um, otherwise, I've really, really liked Pillage as a subsumed ability on Titania. Um, it just works really well with the, the uh, stats that she wants to build naturally. Um, it, it works with her kit, um, so you can see me using it here. Um, it, it just provides a lot, and I can go into that a little more uh, in the actual build section. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm basically just standing here tanking Steel Path enemies not really caring all that much um so with the right mod setup and especially once you add pillage in titania is actually insanely tanky it's it's really surprising how tanky this little fairy can be um a, a really important part of managing her kit is buffs um and so managing your buffs on her is is pretty important um so you can see i'm gonna refresh my buffs on my tribute here and so, you know, she has several buffs. She has her tribute, so that's four buffs. She has her spellbind, which when you self-cast it, it's also a buff, um, which is actually quite important to keep up. So here you can see I'm dropping out of Razor Wing to reset my Razor Flies, then cycling through my tribute buffs. The reason I do that is because this way my Razor Wings will, or uh, the little butterflies, will go out and get the buffs for me. So I don't have to go searching for them because those aren't affected by vacuum. So it's a little annoying if you don't have your uh, butterflies out to go get those. So definitely recommend resetting the, that, uh, going in and out of Razor Wing real quick before you do your tribute buffs. Um, your uh, first ability, Spellbind, if you self-cast that, it makes you immune to status effects. That is really nice. Um, the only thing that really is threatening or one of the few things that are threatening to a good build on steel path are status effects um you can get chunked pretty heavily by slash procs heat procs toxin procs so just being immune to those all the time is awesome it also makes you immune to stagger and knockdown so you can see i kind of hit some walls and stuff in here and um usually with titania you go into that really annoying arc wing stagger roll um, however, if you're keeping your spellbind up, you don't get staggered when you hit a wall. So extremely useful to keep that up. Um, 
overall, the tribute buffs, I think, are relatively useful. They last for two minutes, which is quite a long time. So it's, it's pretty low upkeep. It's not a huge investment to keep them active. Um, and, you know, there's that little trick for making it a little easier. So now we can get right into the build. Uh, so we'll switch over to Dex Pixia. And um, so uh, I've really been liking the Slash build on Dex Pixia. I think it's, uh, it's really, really worked out well in Steel Path. Um, usually uh, I would run a crit focus build. Um, so this is what I tried initially in Steel Path, and this is kind of what's more commonly used on um, like Eidolons or Lephantis or whatever. Without the 60-60s, they would be 90s uh, elemental mods. Um, however, the base crit chance, even for Titania Prime, it's just not really there. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't super happy with the crit build when I first tried her way back when Steel Path first came out over the summer. So that's when I kind of put her down, um, and I, I was a little disappointed in her performance. Um, you know, usually you would have this be, instead of viral, you'd most likely have um, corrosive or radiation, depending on the boss that you were fighting, uh, depending on, you know, what whatever kind of elemental resistance you were going after. Uh, and that works fine. That's kind of an established build for specific activities. Um, these these are somewhat similar to Mesa's Peacemakers where they are affected by uh, ability strength. Um, however, um, you, don't, you don't really, I, I haven't found that you need to stack ability strength to an insane degree to get damage out of them. Um, but now I've really been liking the slash base build uh, in large part due to this new mod from Deimos called Karna Stinger. So that's this uh, pistol slash status chance mod. And so Dex Pixia have pretty decent stat, uh, status chance, and they also are very, very heavily slash based. Um, and so one of the issues is um, with the crit build, even though the crit build has okay status, um, slash was still very low compared to heat and viral. Um, now heat is an okay status to get multiple procs of. It will stack in damage, uh, and, and stacking heat procs is, is actually quite a viable uh, way to do damage. Um, viral, however, loses effectiveness after you get to 10 stacks. So after 10 stacks, you're just refreshing the debuff. You're not actually adding more damage. Uh, slash, however, is one of the highest you know, one of the best ways to do damage in Warframe, honestly. A huge reason why melee is really strong is because of abusing Weeping Wounds to get crazy slash procs. Um, and so weapons that have a lot of slash are really, really useful. So for those of you who don't know, you can control the, the status procs you get from a weapon based off of their relative damage numbers. So here, because Heat is the highest, then Viral, then Slash, that's kind of the priority order of what's most likely to proc when I get a status proc. So, you know, the extra damage you get from crit doesn't really make up for the fact that you're getting so many less Slash procs. However, when we go to the Slash build, you can see, um, and I am using kind of an unranked Heated Charge here, but we can see that Slash is now the number one damage type on Dex Pixia. And that's really big, because that means we are going to be getting primarily Slash procs, then Heat procs, then Viral. And since you can get such an insane fire rate on Dex Pixia through Razorwing Blitz, um, you can get a lot of status procs really, really fast. So that's kind of how I was shredding those Grenier units. Even on Steel Path, you know, you're getting 10 stacks of Viral really quick. You're applying a boatload of Slash procs. And since so much of this weapon is Slash, those Slash procs are going to be doing a lot of damage. Um, so, of course, Viral interacts really well with Slash. And, you know, I also have that Punch Through mod, Seeker, um, which really helps with her uh, kind of trash clear. So Titania always had really good single target damage, but just... Adding some punch through to Dex Pixia was really enough to kind of push it over the edge. Um, so I was I was very happy with this build. Um, I think it's it's definitely worked really well in Steel Path. Now, like, like like I mentioned before, this this build is more for normal missions, right? It's not for those kind of 
very um, very niche use cases. Uh, however, I think Titania is super fun, and kind of my goal for this was being able to use her more frequently in like normal missions. Um, in addition, I think with some of the steel path changes coming up where long endurance runs aren't going to be efficient for farming uh, steel essence, I think that you're really going to see uh, potentially much more opportunity to use frames like Titania or Wukong or frames that are very fast who can do something like rescue missions, capture missions, sabotage, those types of missions um, quickly to, you know, get through all those steel path daily missions that we're going to be uh, doing now, as opposed to the current meta, which is just very long endurance runs, uh, focusing on using Korra. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for Titania to kind of come into the meta a little bit, I hope. I think she's actually quite a good frame, so I kind of hope she becomes a little more meta. Um, going into the build, um, so the companion, it doesn't really matter. Your supporting, your other weapons don't really matter. Um, as far as the build goes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of options with Titania. So one of the reasons I ended up going with Pillage was I really liked, um, I really liked duration on her more than range, and her. A normal three ability lantern which is kind of supposed to function like a uh you know kind of like a damage ability but more like a control defensive ability it, it just didn't it just didn't really work it was extremely difficult to have enough range for lantern to really be effective while also having enough efficiency and duration for your four to not be uh, too much of an energy burden and pillage actually scales the effective range of pillage primarily scales with duration so it really just naturally fit into the build i wanted to to have for titania rather than trying to force lantern to work effectively um, so i've been very happy with pillage i think you know um an option uh if if you don't have arcane pistolier um, an option is definitely to use the uh, helmet ability that increases your ammo efficiency for a short time. I don't think that that's really super great. Um, Arcane Energize is, is obviously very strong. It's kind of a, you know, it's it's unfortunately just a, a, a part of almost every endgame build. Um, so that really helps with keeping up her four. Her other abilities are also really, really strong. So I think if you if you don't have Energize, you probably are going to want to have the um, 170% or 175% efficiency because with Razorwing Blitz, you're really encouraged to keep your buffs going, uh, which means using abilities. And so if you're just running 130% uh, efficiency, you can, you can have some energy problems, especially if you don't have Energize. So this adaptation slot is very much a flex slot. I'd say, honestly, Titania is just very flexible in general. Um, as long as you have enough efficiency to feel comfortable maintaining Razor Wing, that's probably your number one concern. And then number two is uh, enough duration where your buff management is comfortable. You know, you have more than enough damage reduction. I, I really like Aerodynamic and Aviator. Um, those both give a ton of damage reduction, which stacks multiplicatively with the 25% damage reduction from shields and multiplicatively with the damage reduction from adaptation. So even without adaptation, you are crazy tanky. And then you put pillage on top of that where you can basically reset your shields at will. And this fairy is really tanky. So I've been really, really happy with her tankiness. Um, one mod that I've, I've really been using a lot more lately is this preparation mod. And so this, this is an awesome pairing with Primed Flow or even Normal Flow if you don't have Primed Flow. And it lets you just, boom, start a mission off, you're full energy. You, really, you don't even need Energize in that case as long as you have enough efficiency. So if all you're doing with Titania is shorter missions, you don't really need Energize that badly. Obviously, Energize is great to have. Um, even in endurance missions, though, preparation will give you your full energy back if you happen to die and need to res. 
So it's, it's a really fantastic mod. I know it's a little hard to farm, but I think it's definitely worth it. Um, I would shoot for trying to farm it if you can. Um, or otherwise, you know, you can always farm the plat and buy it from, from another player. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm actually not running Prime Surefooted on this build because Spellbind will give you that stagger immunity. So... It's Spellbind's a very surprisingly good ability. It's t it's Titania's Helminth ability. I actually started messing around with it on other frames, and I found it to be really nice. Like, there were some frames where I wanted that knockdown immunity, but I didn't want to run Prime Surefooted, but I could fit Spellbind into the build, and it really it, it really helped a lot. So if you don't have Prime Surefooted, don't overlook Spellbind. It's not a bad ability. Um... Overall, though, like I said, you know, efficiency to taste, depending on if you have Energize or not, um, duration, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, you know, Razorwing Blitz has a relatively low uh, base duration of eight seconds. Spellbind has an okay duration of 16 seconds. So I really liked opting for much more duration, not using uh, Fleeting Expertise for the extra efficiency and, you know, just, just making that buff management a little easier. Uh, tribute, the buffs aren't affected by duration, um, the actual buffs themselves, nor nor are they affected by strength or anything. So, but like I said, they last for two minutes. It's pretty worthwhile. Um, you know, you, you have your your thorn, your your kind of uh, evasion damage reduction. I really actually like the movement speed reduction quite a bit. That's that's really nice actually. Um, it just makes it easier to line up your your Dex Pixia to hit multiple enemies at once. And um, I like that it highlights enemies. That's also kind of nice, too. So a Tribute, definitely not a bad ability at all. Um, I, I think it's uh, received a lot of nice quality of life changes in the past few, you know, year or so. So, um, you know, and then Pillage, obviously, uh, or, you know, that's the Subsumed ability. I, I tried quite a few Subsumed abilities on Titania, and nothing really fit as well as Pillage. Um, and of course, this is all assuming you're going to be using Razor Wing most of the time. So overall, um, I, I've been really happy with, with Titania. Um, I think after I did a little experimentation and uh, changed my build a bunch uh, after Deimos came out and after Steel Path, I think she's in a really good spot. And like I mentioned before, I think there's a lot of opportunity for Titania to become a little bit more meta with how Steel Path is going to change, which is most likely going to be today with Deimos Arcana dropping uh, for sure this week. So I'm super excited about Titania. I think she's kind of an overlooked frame a little bit. Um, I think she's a lot better than people give her credit for. She did have some pretty janky mechanics in the past. So, you know, I can understand why uh, people, you know, might not necessarily want to try her out again, but you know, now that she has a prime, she's actually a little easier to farm. I think she's actually more accessible for new players now that you don't have to do her quest, so you can just farm her prime. Um, she's not vaulted, so you want to go out there and get yourself a Titania or Titania Prime, or, you know, if you'd put her down in the past and want to try her again, I think this is a great time. So hopefully the suggestions I have here uh, kind of make your Titania experience a little better. I've been having a ton of fun with her. I think she's pretty fantastic. She also has really awesome fashion frame. Her prime looks amazing. Her deluxe skin looks ridiculous. Um, so yeah, beautiful frame, really effective. I think she's got a promising future. Um, so let me know, you know, if you like playing Titania, um, what helmet abilities you picked on her, um, anything like that. So really hope you have a good time. Uh, hopefully Deimos Arcana is a good patch. And I uh, hope everybody has a good day. So thanks. See you around.